Good day to all. Welcome to Extreme Recap. A mask was made by a group of sorcerers from the Dark Empire of Acheron thousands of years ago. Utilizing the skulls of dead rulers. In order to give the mask its dark power, they then offered their daughters as sacrifices to the evil gods. After that, they set out to enslave the rest of the world and killed anyone who dared to cross their path. There were only the barbarian tribes left to oppose them. The Sumerians' leader also destroyed the mask and defeated the sorcerers in a bloody and violent battle. Then, no one could use the mask shard that each tribe kept. However, according to a prophecy, someone would attempt to reassemble everything. Akron eventually succumbed as well. A while later, in the midst of the battle, the Sumerians are engaged in conflict with a rival clan. The pregnant wife of Karen suffers fatal injuries. However, when Karen discovers her, she begs him to open her stomach so that she can give birth to the child, whom she gives the name Conan before she passes away due to the fact that he was born on a battlefield. It is believed that Conan's birth is a powerful sign. Conan matures into a ferocious teenager over the course of the years, but he can also be quite disorganized in the morning when all of the tribe's teens take the test to determine whether or not they can become warriors. Conan shows up late. However, Karen allows him to join in any case. Every boy runs into the forest in search of an egg, pushing each other to lose the competition, breaking other eggs, and not caring if anyone falls or gets hurt. The boys are pursued by a group of strangers who suddenly appear among the trees. The majority of teenagers return to their tribe. However, Conan uses the opportunity to throw his bowl as Conan and causes him to fall because he wants to prove himself. The brutal warriors then encircle him. Conan is being pursued by yet another individual, who grabs him by the hair. However, Conan immediately raises his defense. He then knocks the man down with a few blows. He goes on and on. After that, he steals a weapon from the enemy and fights without mercy, brutally killing everyone until he is alone in the forest with a bunch of bodies. Conan then makes his way back to the tribe, this time with the egg from the trial in his mouth and the heads of his foes in his hands, since Conan's was a soldier. He learns how to make a sword when Karen takes him to his foundry. The main attempt breaks. Then, at that point, Karen uncovers the manufacturing privileged insights of the family so Conan can make a decent blade and Conan has a volatile personality and allows his rage to hinder his learning, facilitating his dad's use of tricks to defeat him. Karen likewise advises Conan he's not prepared to have such a sword yet. Conan later discovers a group of armored warriors bearing the symbol of a two-headed serpent while alone in the forest. Ride by these men, come to the clan and begin a severe battle against the savages, with the two sides killing heroes out of control. In addition, the strangers have warriors and exceptionally skilled archers who carry out mass killings and set fire to buildings with rocks. Conan comes out of the forest to fight and drive, also, is occupied by attempting to contact him, allowing the adversary the opportunity to wreck him. Conan discovers by sneaking around that his father has been taken to the foundry to meet Zim, the enemy leader. Who asks for Karn's masterpiece when he reveals that he is all different? At the point when Karen rejects. He is limited and harmed to attempt to make him talk irate, Conan hops in and assaults a champion named Lucius, figuring out how to remove the man's nose. Karen utilizes the opportunity to assault, as well. However, there are too many warriors, and the father and son quickly become overwhelmed. A while later, Karen is tied to a cauldron of liquid metal hanging above him and Jim continues to jab it to consume. Karen, while Conan is compelled to observe. Marie, Jim's daughter, discovers the mask shard in a box beneath the floorboard using her magical abilities. He now has what he desires. Zim burns down the foundry and hits Karn's legs prior to jabbing at the cauldron once more, making Conan run and get the chains to prevent the cauldron from killing his father, Marie steals, vehicle and blade. What's more, Zim adds the last shard to the cover to at long last finish it, promising his girl that he'll utilize it to acquire his mom back the foundry. Conan is unable to save him, so Karen tells him to leave. Conan, on the other hand, refuses, so Karen ends things for himself so that Conan can free himself from the chains with his hands hurt. Conan leaves the structure and laments for his partnered clan prior to taking a blade from the heap of bodies, as he swears. Twenty years later now Conan is a hired gun. Together with a pirate named Artist, he reviews a slave camp. To begin, 
They severely damage the camp by rolling a number of rocks down the mountain. After that, they get involved in a hand-to-hand -hand fight and kill every slave owner they can. Nobody can take a single blow from Conan, a highly skilled warrior. The survivors are then taken to Messenger, Missouri, for a musical celebration. Alcohol and Women A group of men bearing the snake symbol suddenly arrive at the party. Conan also observes that Captain Lucius is in charge. They appear to be in search of something. After Conan realizes this, a pickpocket named Lashawn Conan grabs Lashawn, attacks a guard, and then knowingly surrenders himself in order to learn more about his adversary. Conan and Allah Shah are swiftly transported to a filthy prison where criminals are employed. When a guard makes fun of Conan and leaves him chained, he gets involved and starts a new fight. Harming the watchmen until they uncover where Lucius is stowing away. Conan then gains access to the captain's quarters by using the guard's head. There, he fights more guards and kills them, much to the delight of the prisoners who are watching. Conan then grabs Lucius and starts to hurt him until he Jim appears to have evolved into a powerful shadow lord. Furthermore, these days, he's searching for the unadulterated blood relative of the alchemists of Precise, since he really wants their blood to open the covers. Real power when Lucius lets him know where to find Zim, Conan makes him swallow his critical prior to taking him outside. As he declares to the detainees, they're free at this point. All they have to do is extract the key from Lucius' stomach. Soon, a large number of irate men gather around Lucius to kill him. Conan advances out, and Allah, if he ever needs to repay the favor, Sean tells him where to find him. When Conan sees artists again, he asks them to let him work on his vengeance on his own. In the meantime, the older priest Fashion tells Tamara at a monastery that he saw a warrior who would come to take her back to her birthplace. Out of nowhere, a multitude of snake faction fighters shows up, drove by Zim and a more seasoned Marie who went after the cloister looking for the unadulterated blood as an immense vehicle obliterates the town's walls. People try to flee as panic grips the town. However, the Sims men are brutal and kill everyone in their path. Fasher discovers Tamara and asks her to leave in a carriage bearing the snake symbol. Tamara wants to assist in the defense of the town and throw some hits of her own. Conan recognizes the carriage in the nearby forest as the adversary. He rides after them because of the snake. He also jumps on the roof and breaks it when he gets close enough to find Tamara. While the archers begin to fire arrows at him, she tries to stab him with a knife. However, Conan avoids them all and then gets back on the horse to fight a snake soldier named Raymond who has caught up to them. Additionally, soldiers are pursuing the carriage. Tamara then gets up from her seat kicks the driver, and takes control of the carriage after hanging perilously high for a few seconds. She disconnects the carriage when a soldier tries to get closer. Conan cuts a horse's reins to catch a soldier and drag him through the ground, causing it to fall and crash on the road to delay the soldiers. Raymond immediately pursues Cameron after she jumps on a horse to get away faster, attempting to knock her over with her horse. At that point, Conan leaps off his own pony and got a few chains from a close-by structure, utilizing them to take out the trooper that had been following him. Conan fights the additional soldiers simultaneously as they arrive, killing them one by one with no mercy. Then, at that point, Conan uncovers his personality to Raymond, who moves frightened and heads out. In town again, Marie is examining each of the temple's women for pure blood, losing customers. One of the women is killed and the others are hurt by Marie, who always finds out by tasting their blood. They can't find anyone among them. The guards then summon Fashion, who asserts that there is no more pure blood. But Zim doesn't think he's right. Then, Zim tells how he and Marie had to watch his wife being attacked by fascist orders and set on fire. Fassa, on the other hand, argues in favor of this incident by pointing out that Jim's wife had been a crazed fanatic who desired power over the land. When Jim hears this, he snaps. He then continues to smash the head of fashion on the temple floor. Jim forms a garden at that exact moment, knowing that Raymond is still after a woman. Back in the forest, Zim concludes that she must be pure blood. Raymond is killed when Conan gets too close to him to kill him and knock him off his horse. Subsequently, Conan surmises that Tamara is the one Zim is searching for. Tamara also demands to be brought back to her homeland because she believes Conan to be the man from the fascist vision. 
Conan ties Tamara up at night just in case she wants to get away. Since Tamara asks too many questions because he wants to use her to attract them. By stuffing a piece of cloth in her mouth, Conan silences her. Raymond wakes up the following morning and informs Conan that Tamara is Akron's last pure blood. Conan instead ties Raymond to his horse and orders him to lead him to Zim, despite his offer of a substantial reward for her. After loads of voyaging, they at long last arrived at Sim's camp, where they track down a lot of deserted slings. Before launching Raymond, Conan ties him to one of them and covers his mouth with the same cloth. Raymo dies when he crashes into Zim's enormous vehicle. Using her magic, Marie examines the body and discovers the cloth bearing a message from Conan inviting Zim to meet. Tamara is with him, according to Marie. Conan and Zim meet later at an abandoned outpost. Tamara is attached to a post, yet it's just for show since she has her blade in her grasp. Zim attempts to purchase Tamara, however Conan requests a battle. Marie also appears suddenly and uses her magic to create sand soldiers who immediately begin attacking Conan. They keep evading his blows by fusion with the sand on the ground, making it extremely difficult for him to fight them. Conan is also knocked down quickly. The sand men then begin to fire their weapons at Conan, prompting him to flee. Tamara is also approached by one of the Sandman, who, before fleeing as well, uses a knife to quickly freeze herself and strike the Sandman. Conan climbs the structure as high as could be expected, and when the Sandmen come after him, Conan moves quickly and pushes them to the ground where they're crushed once again into grains of sand. Tamara is being pursued by a Sandman, who causes her to tumble through a number of wooden platforms. Conan, however, destroys him just in time to prevent him from reaching her. Conan is able to retrieve his sword and destroy the last Sandman that remains. Jim appears shortly thereafter to engage Conan directly in a fierce duel. From the start, they appear to be almost equally coordinated. Marie, on the other hand, seizes the opportunity to poison Conan with a boomerang dagger laced with poison after Conan reveals his identity. When an opening presents itself, Tamara drags Conan away and throws a torch at some oil that has been spilled, causing an explosion that prevents Sim from following them. Now that Conan is feeling weak, it is simple for him to overpower him and repeatedly throw him to the ground. After that, Tamara and Conan wait on the outside wall for artists to arrive on a ship. Therefore, in order to be rescued later that evening, the duo dives into the water. When the snake cult suddenly attacks Conan while everyone is sleeping on the ship, Artists and the crew jump into action and fight the soldiers, killing every man who dares to look for them. Particularly, Tamara Conan lets his inner rage take over, recalling what his enemies did to his tribe before killing them. As an ever-increasing number of troopers are tossed over the edge, Tamara makes an honest effort to guard herself, also killing a few men. The crew prevails in the battle after exerting a lot of effort, shedding a lot of sweat, and can now continue sailing in peace. Conan makes the announcement that he is leaving on his own when the ship finally reaches Jim's kingdom. However, the artist reveals that Conan misplaced the map after he has left. Tamara then presents it to him. Conan and Tamara are struggling with bidding farewell, and they wind up kissing. They then head to the nearest cave to spend a few hours having fun together. Tamara begins her journey back to the ship once Conan has fallen asleep. In any case, in the woods. Marie and her men ambush her and immediately capture her. They are already gone when Conan arrives to search for her. Marie then takes Tamara to seize him and taste her blood to ensure that Tamara is a pure blood descendant of Akuran's necromancers. In the meantime, Conan looks for a lash in the city of thieves. Conan attacks him after he enters a tavern and the proprietor refuses to answer his questions. Thankfully, Sean shows up and stops Conan before things get any worse, thanks to Allah. Additionally, he is prepared to repay Conan for releasing him from jail. They eventually reach Zim's fortress, where Conan has brought Lashan to figure out how to get inside. They discover an old mine beneath the fortress. So all Lashan figures out how to make the ways for the underground passages with his extraordinary expert key. The pair descends a few steps and finds the entire region is overflowed and loaded with skeletons, so they should watch out. A huge snake suddenly grabs a lawmaker and drags him under the water. In order for Conan to free his friend and kill the snake with his sword, he must swim quickly. Marie, on the other hand, is dressed in the manner of her mother. In preparation for the upcoming ceremony, 
Tamara is then shackled to a special device. Conan and Alashan eventually emerge from a pool inside a room with slaves in cages and a terrified guard. When he first notices. Near the pool, the man quickly frees a group of slaves. Additionally, as a result, a number of tentacles abruptly emerge from the water. Ala, Sean flees to a cage to hide while soldiers confront the intruders. However, the tentacles also capture and kill many of them. Conan dodges the tentacles as he fights the guards, and the angry guard pulls at the chains in a Sean of the cage-like move so that it can serve as bait. He tries to use the key to open the cage, but he drops it by accident and doesn't know how to pick locks. The usual route that Conan takes to take control of the chains is to fight the guard. Conan then wraps the chain around the guard's body and hits him with a mace to send him into the water after they hit each other multiple times. The monster attacks the guard right away and eats his legs. Therefore, the guard serves as a bleeding decoration when Conan pulls him again using the chains. After traversing the various corridors, the two finally reach the balcony, where they discover that Tamara has been taken to the Skull Cave. Conan can now jump on Lasha's cage and finally free him before they run away. When Conan reaches the Skull Cave, it is already past midnight, so Conan informs Alashan that he has compensated himself. Zim is causing Tamer pain in order to get her blood on the mask while Conan fights a few guards to get closer to the ritual. The horns on the side are now magically moving. And following Zim, he tries to bring his wife back to life. At that point, before the spell can be finished, Conan appears in attack's zone. The entire cave begins to shake and fall suddenly. The device containing Tamara falls into the abyss as the other members of the cult flee. Conan leaps after her to save her because, fortunately, the sticks on the sides cause it to get stuck on the walls. Notwithstanding, Zim comes to and starts another blade duel with Conan while remaining on the contraption, the men trade a couple of blows. And once more the entire cave shakes. The device falls over and is left on its side. To avoid falling, Conan must therefore grasp Tamara's chains. Zoomed is the same, and the device starts spinning. However, Conan now has a chance to reach Tamara and finally set her free. Conan and Jim continue to fight until they fall as Tamara flees. The device quickly catches up to them and crashes into them. In any case, the two men leap far removed without a moment to spare. Marie, on the other hand, looks for Tamara by smelling her blood. Additionally, the women start a fight. Conan pursues Tamara after hearing her yell his name. While Zimbabwe follows him at that point. Before escaping, Tamara punches Marie in the face and throws her against the wall. However, Marie easily locates her once more because she can still smell her blood. After that, she tries to kill her with a rock and a chain. Fortunately, Conan shows up and cuts off her hand to stop her. Marie is then pushed to her death by Tamara. Conan and Tamara then attempt to flee. However, a column collapses, causing them to split. Conan continues to move and catches Zim, who concedes he's utilizing Karn's edge. Conan, furious at hearing this, takes the sword that belongs to him with his own hands. Additionally, since Jim possesses two additional swords, they re-engage in combat by dual wielding. A violent stool follows. However this time Zim is so easily defeated by Conan that he abandons his sword and chooses to fight only with his father's sword. Conan is soon disarming Zim and pushing him against a wall, where falling debris prevents him from moving. Conan then reunites with Tamar and they escape the cave as he discovers his daughter's body and discovers that he is still alive. He screams that he will get his revenge and is devastated. Conan and Tamara are crossing a bridge as they run. However, Tamara falls through the hole when a wooden board suddenly breaks. Fortunately, Conan saves her by grabbing her chains just in time. However, Zim appears and completes the spell to call back his deceased wife. The old spirit, which initially possesses cameras and a body, Additionally, she begs Conan to free her. When Conan says no, he is mocked by Zim for finding himself once more in the same predicament. However, Conan kills him by cutting the bridge with his sword and falling to his death. Tamara returns to normal as a result of the spell being immediately halted by this. After that, Conan finishes lifting Tamara up, and the so-called destroyed snake helps them get out of the cave safely. Conan returns Tamara to her origination, telling her that they'll meet again sometime prior to leaving. A while later. To perform, 
Conan returns to his home village, the grave of his father that he is finally deserving of the sword. Turn on notifications, please subscribe for more videos like this, and like the channel to support it. Thank you very much for watching.